Hey folks, this is Kalani. One of the new types of content in Battle for Azeroth is the island expeditions. It seems like there's quite a few islands out there that haven't been explored or charted yet, so obviously it's our job to go check them out to see if any of these little islands has anything worthwhile. I'd stop to question why exactly there are so many islands we haven't cared about for so long now. I mean, we go back and forth between the Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor and no one saw any of this stuff? No one bothered to look over the side of the boats this whole time? Oh well, more loot for me. With the Azerite bleeding out from the surface of Azeroth pretty much everywhere, the goblins and gnomes devised some sneaky little contraptions which tell us exactly where to go hunting for this powerful resource. Most of the areas we'll be hunting for Azerite will be tied to the island expeditions, and it's really convenient for us that we just and so happen to befriend some of the most prominent naval factions the World of Warcraft has to offer. The Kul'Turas Navy will ferry the Alliance, and the Zandalari Navy will ferry the Horde. Good job we made some friends this expansion. You can head down to the docks of your capital city, Borolis for Alliance and Zuldazar for the Horde, take one of your fastest ships and set out for these islands with the task of hoarding as much Azerite as you can possibly carry. The expeditions are three player cooperative scenarios which aren't limited by role. That means you can take three tanks, three healers or three DPS or any combination of your desire. Apparently the team has learned a lot about solo play and limited group play over the last few expansions, so I wouldn't be surprised if you had a few extra bonuses on the islands that reacted to specific roles. These islands are designed to take around 15 to 20 minutes to complete, making it pretty quick content which you should be able to fit into any busy schedule. It appears to work on a queue based system as well, so queue up by yourself or with your team of three and go to town on these scenarios any time of the day. It really is the Mr. Pandaria scenarios come back to life, except we can pretend we're sailing across the great sea to find the treasures of long lost islands while we're on the loading screen. The main objective of these expeditions is to collect Azerite, both for your faction and a little bit for yourself. It seems like a lot of gameplay is going to be surrounding Azerite and which faction has more of it in their possession. So that's the why and how of this new feature, but what are the actual islands going to look like? It turns out that it completely depends on when you decide to set sail. The islands are designed to be fresh and new pretty much every time you set out, so you could end up on the exact same island several times in a row, but the challenges and loot that await will actually be different. Different. The plan here is to create a form of content which is replayable at its core. It's very unlikely that you'll see the same exact island with the same stuff back to back. You can encounter a whole bunch of different challenges on the islands and a variety of ways to collect the Azerite you seek. Large monsters that are infused with the Azerite can be slain to take your prize. Local monsters might be gathering the Azerite for themselves into chests, bags or baskets. Seems like pretty much anything and everything is drawn to the Azerite, so expect to see a wide variety of monsters on these islands gathering the Azerite for their own purposes, and you might come across large spires of the raw Azerite, or you might even get the chance to help a quest giver who is gathering Azerite themselves. There's even the possibility of finding powerful bosses to vanquish, and many more ideas the dev team can implement as they see fit. So basically you could set out and come across an island overrun with small monsters, and the next time you go out it could be only a few monsters, but they're much more powerful. You can also find shrines which will provide you with powerful bonuses, but at a cost. If you want to deal more damage, you're going to have to deal with taking more damage yourselves. It seems like there's always a risk reward factor when you use one of these shrines and their effects cannot be removed until they expire, so it's definitely a meaningful choice whether or not to lock yourself into that little contract, which is really cool. The game could use a few more meaningful choices. The islands are being designed as puzzles where if you put the pieces together properly you can make things much easier. Throw an azurite encrusted starfish at the big enemies guarding an azurite spire to stun it and deal extra damage so the shrine which forces you to take extra damage doesn't actually matter that much anymore because the monster dies in the stun. Kill off all the Mogu necromancers that have taken up residence and use their portal to an underground Mogu crypt to kill their meddling leaders and take their horde of Azerite. That kind of thing. It's nice to give us the option to look around and see what we can make use of or see which areas we would want to focus on before we run in guns blazing. So every time you head out to the island, you could be met with a different puzzle with a whole bunch of different pieces. There can be different casts of creatures and different little factions on the island with their own plans and special setup. There can be special capture points which allow you to control some old cannons of a washed up ship or some other source of powerful extra abilities which you can use on that island. A whole variety of chests and Azerite nodes with differing values of Azerite to collect. Quest givers to assist, consumables and shrines to use to your advantage. Different start locations so you're not always starting your 
your island adventures from the same spot. I believe each different island has four different starting locations. There can be caves, extra ships, portals, and a whole lot more. That's a lot of different pieces to put together to create a random story a particular island tells. If you're worried about things being a bit too random in the sense of the whole thing kind of being thrown out the window, don't worry, the dev team is setting the system up in such a way where you won't have a murloc fighting alongside a runaway orc fighting alongside a sorok. The monsters themselves will be more of an inhabitants factor, rather than individual creatures which are changed in and out. You'll have groups of mogu or groups of murlocs, the monsters that you find on the island will always make sense to be together. Now, we won't be alone on these islands. I mentioned earlier that both the goblins and the gnomes developed the technology to scan for Azerite, so you can expect some champions of the opposing faction to arrive on your islands as well. These champions are set groups of three which have their own story and their own set of abilities. We're previewed a set of Darkspear trolls who have a berserker, witch doctor, and shadow hunter in their party, and a party of wargon who I'm sure will sniff you out wherever you hide. These champions will be after the same exact resources that you yourself are trying to claim. They'll try to take your Azerite chests and nodes, and they'll try to kill the bosses with the big chunks of Azerite. They're there for the same reason you are, so you'll have to beat them to the punch. The dev team also stressed how different these NPCs were going to be. This isn't going to be a case of cheese the NPCs by getting aggro and running to the other side of the island while your friends scoop up all the loot. They're going to play dirty, and they're going to use some decent tactics. They'll focus on map objectives and understand the strategy of the islands. A rogue who is fighting a boss might blind you to finish off the boss, blind the boss to turn his sights onto you, or just vanish and go get all his friends and come back with his backup. Mages would actually sheep you, mount up and run off, because that's the best strategy to beating you to the Azerite. There's also a strong focus on providing visually different locations for these island adventures. We have two we can look at so far. One is more of a tropical island, while the other is an abandoned Gilnean stronghold which has fallen into ruin. There's also going to be four different difficulties of this content when it comes out. Normal, heroic, and mythic PvE modes will increase the capabilities of the NPCs you're facing to the point where they're going to get super sneaky and steal all of your stuff. And the fourth difficulty level is actually PvP. Obviously the PvP mode will pit you against three actual players, which sounds like it's going to be the most fun version. Outsmarting and working around an enemy team to snatch all of the Azerite for yourself is going to be extremely satisfying for sure. So, that's it for the Island Expedition feature, coming with the Battle of Azeroth expansion. What mode do you think you'll play the Island Adventures on? Will you take it easy or pit yourself against actual players? Leave your thoughts and theories in the comments section below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.